<laughs> yeah, so um, something happened in between episodes, and uh, well, not great. As you can see here, Juan Fallin has uh, moved to Udinese for 3.3 million. Uh, I had no say in this. I'll put a screenshot up now. The board did it for me. They they just decided that that was it. 3.3 million is an offer too good to refuse, and Udinese took him from me on deadline day, uh, and and he's gone. Juan Fallin is gone. So that was the major thing that happened. Juan Fallin is gone. He's on a much bigger contract now as well. He's going to be missed. He is a very, very good player. As I said in, in last episode, he is the best defender in the second division in Spain. That's what it said on the on like the, the season preview thing. He was the best defender. So he is going to be missed. However, I think we should be strong enough without him. It did make quite a nice boost to the finances, actually. We're now at 9.3 million overall balance, which is pretty nice. Uh, if we want to spend it, we have got 3.6 million to spend now, which is pretty good, although I don't want to spend it too much. Our wage budget is actually looking pretty decent as well. It's all looking pretty good in terms of money, I've got to say. I don't really want to spend the wage budget too much because I don't think we need to in this division. We've brought in loads of free transfers, which should be good enough, I think, to get us promoted. It's kind of like next season we have to save us money for if we get promoted. Of course, the money is good. Uh, the youth facilities are nearly complete. So when they're complete, uh, I'm going to ask straight away again to improve them again. So hopefully their board will say yes because we've got that money in place. And also, we did manage to upgrade the uh, junior coaching budget as well, if you we look at facilities. So now we've got good junior coaching and average or above average youth recruitment. So uh, in future, it's not quite letting me update it again yet. But I think in a couple months of time, we should be able to improve that again and the board should say yes because we have got nine million in the bank now so a bit of a different start to the episode for you there but i had to show you that news because that is the big breaking news so hello and welcome back to the real deal today we have got two games for you uh, logronas in segunda division and then albacete in the spanish cup that sort of came in between my last palmas game this one so i thought i'd show you the spanish cup because we've not really touched on the spanish cup at all last season we weren't very good and this year we need to sort of try and focus on it a little bit more because we didn't really meet the board's target and i think we need to get fifth round this year i think that's what i said yeah fifth round so we need to reach that uh, to make the board happy since you were last year things have been it's actually been pretty good i've got to say to be fair uh, we did play albacete in the second game of the season seeing we're playing in the cup today and we won 2-0 uh, around a thomas with a brace there two penalties there which was pretty good it was after this albacete game that we lost fall in he went after this game uh, and we played lugo and we lost uh, unfortunately so we were a little bit lost at the back there without fall in for that game we really didn't play very well defensively uh, it was annoying because we were the better side more chances created more shots more possession they were just better essentially and we are defensive rubbish we then played Pomperada next uh, we won 2-1 it was a little bit of a, a weird one they scored the first minute and this an Ellison guy uh, he I mean he's not got a great scout report I've got to say but he was dangerous that entire game he could have scored quite a few goals there I was not pleased with the way he played there we really struggled to win that game so we were lucky to win it we then came up against Valladolid in the Spanish Cup second round Anthony Lozano picking up the only goal of that game to make sure we won that 1-0 which was pretty good and then last time out we played Barcelona B and after being 2-1 down at half time Raul de Thomas was the hero for us he scored himself a hat trick could have had four because he had a goal disallowed as well and had a few more decent chances but he was on fire that game Raul de Thomas so already I think he's been the best signing we've made so far I'm also recording this before yesterday's episode goes out so um you may have said he was a rubbish signing I don't know I can't I've not read the comments obviously because I'm recording it before that so uh, if you did say it was a rubbish signing there we go there's proof he's not I do want to talk about the B team very quickly I'll go to the reports actually you can see that we've got a pretty stacked B team this year uh, Julio Diaz has gone up to five star potential now which is pretty good uh, but a lot of four and a half star potential players these are sort of players that we brought in and things like that uh, so they're kind of the, the players that we're looking at uh, they're not in a proper well they are in a league obviously but it doesn't count in football manager football manager don't load that league so i don't know how well we're playing if we're getting promoted or not they are playing in this league apparently you know there's six appearances for borgia there and things like that but um i'm not entirely sure if they're doing well or not because I'd, I'd love to, if they get promoted they get promoted to the second division b and that is in the game so i want them to get promoted so we can actually look at their leagues and stuff like that but i don't know i mean these ratings suggest that we're not doing particularly well i've got to say so i'm not really sure what to think about this b team if anyone's got any advice Please do let me know, but I, I mean, like I say, I don't really know what's going on. Right, that is all the news out of the way then. Today, we are playing the 4-1-2-3 formation, and we've got Juan Carlos in goal as per usual. Uh, Varela, Carlos Hernandez, Subias, and Johannesson make that back line. Subias has been very, very good, I've got to say. I'm looking forward to seeing how he develops. Hopefully, he develops quickly, because he's been playing very well. Williams, Garoletta, and Carvalho start in that midfield. I don't think you've seen Carvalho yet play a game, but he was the one who was injured 
uh, last episode, but has come back from his injury now. Playing as that box to box midfielder today should be pretty decent. Has played well in the games he has played. Aaron and Puko start out on the wings today, and Raul de Thomas, after his hat trick last game, is starting up front today as a Traquatista. Right, kickoff is upon us then. We're in the blue away from home today, and we need to make sure we win. I forgot to show the table again. Okay, well, the table's looking uh, pretty decent, I've got to say. We have just moved up to third on the grounds that we're drawing this match right now. At the start of this episode, we were sitting in fifth. We have just scored a goal as well. Uh, I'll, I'll show you that in a second. I missed it. You can probably see it in the background, actually. That puts us briefly up to second. Now. But these results are looking pretty good for us so far this season, I've got to say. Uh, we are down with one loss, but Numantia haven't lost the game yet, so they're one win ahead of us, essentially. But we're doing pretty well. Um, we still say playoffs is where we should be this season, and by looks of things, we're doing that and setting that example. Right, that goal, then. Let's look at this highlight once again. Let's see what happened. Uh, Williams had the ball, played it out to Garoletta. Aaron is put through wonderfully. He puts a nice ball through to the Thomas, and what a lovely little work move that was. Straight off the training ground, that. What a great goal. Right away, then, since that, we've got a highlight again. De Thomas puts his ball into the middle. Costa manages to clear, actually. There's a bit of a mix-up there between the defence and the goalkeeper. So, yeah, I am pleased with the way we started this season. We haven't been overly convincing in some of these games. There was, well, obviously, we lost the Lugo game, which are disappointing. Uh, the game against Ponferrada, we only just won. We were lucky to win that, I've got to say. So, those two games were a little bit edgy. I mean, the Valadilla game was a close one as well, but that was a cup. Slightly different ballpark there, but I'm overall I am pleased. We have been a little bit more obviously, it's a much better start than last season, so I'm happy with that. If you compare it to where we were this time last season, uh, we are a million miles away, which is good stuff. So, if we can keep this up throughout the rest of the season, and we should be looking safe for that top six finish that we really want this year. I tried to take a breath then, and uh, they, they've scored when I was trying to take that breath. Uh, to catch my breath, essentially. It was, a, it was a stupid goal to concede, really. I was talking over this bit, and Santos put a ball forward towards Bastos, who uh, puts it in the middle, and then, there he is, Manuel, he scores at the near post. That was a real crap goal to concede. Lagranis, of course, are a side that were promoted from uh, the division below last season, so we do need to try and beat them, although we do know what happens when we play sides in the division below. We, we score three goals against them, look like we're going to win it, and then concede three in the second half. And it looks like now, Lagranis might actually score a second before half-time goes. Unfortunately for them, it goes over the bar, but luckily for us, we stay in this game. So the first highlight of the second half is pretty early on the 48th minute. Lagranis trying to come forward now after that little set-piece move that middle did um they just passed it across the pitch basically they're working forward though quite nicely getting the passes through stringing some passes together looking quite nice crespo now on the ball under pressure but does get the ball back to his defender and now they're coming forward once again back to crespo himself who is uh, looking to try and put a ball forward it was a pitiful ball forward and then uh, juan carlos can collect that ball now can he show some decent distribution we need to find a keeper who's good at distribution that was actually very good the thomas gets on the end of it the thomas threw should have done better with his shot there, but a lovely little work move there. Well done, Juan Carlos, for that ball forward. Puko now on the ball for us. He puts it into Rauda Thomas. Rauda Thomas again. Shooting, but it's just not good enough. He needs to get some shooting boots on. He was fantastic in my last game. Today, not quite so much, which is why on the 58-minute mark, Lozano is going to come on the pitch instead. I feel like he has got some better finishing on his feet. Aaron also not played massively well so we're going to bring Pastrana on the pitch he was a guy that we brought in over pre-season a sort of back up on the wings hopefully he's going to come on and change the game for us. he's not had too many chances yet this season so I'm, I feel like I need to give him a few chances uh, he's got two and a half star current ability so he's a decent player he just needs to try and show this to me now on the pitch by selecting more instead of Aaron I mean I've just made a call to push forward uh, it's not particularly happening right now though so I think what we need to do is Williams is looking tired. We're going to move him up to the attack midfield position, but obviously he's not going to play there. Uh, we're going to put on... Ah, now this this is a bit of an issue. I thought we had an attack midfielder on the bench. Uh, turns out we don't really. Garoletta can play there a bit, so we'll bring him on. Uh, Guevara can come on the pitch as a deep line playmaker. I guess that'll do. We can swap him and Carvalho around, actually. They kind of prefer those roles a little bit better. Uh, as a partnership. So we'll move those two around. Garoletta can go in the attacking midfield. Uh, we're going to push up to attacking as well. Uh, and uh, we'll move up to a higher tempo as well. Just for these last 15 minutes, try and work something around. Try and just grab the win in the last 10 minutes. We are desperate for a three points today, especially a team like Lagronis. We should be beating them comfortably. If you look at the stats, this is what it's been like recently. We do dominate the stats, but we don't really make the best use of our chances. They have now got a throw-in 
trying to attack us. They put it into the air that Puko clears it up towards Lozano, but Lozano can't get it. And Lagranis can now come forward once again. They put the ball out wide. However, Varela can, I say he can collect it. He's, Varela has been very lucky there that we've not conceded the goal from that. Four minutes left in this game now. Uh, we, I've added time, that is. And I'm being honest with you here. It's it's not looking great. They've got a chance to come forward now, do Lagranis. Uh, and they're trying to bring it forward. Although they do, oh, that is a poor ball. Look, oh, Lozano, I thought was going to get there. Uh, it's not, not a back pass. Clearly, our, our player put it forward. Again, their, cl their clearance is not very good. Garaletta now on the ball. His pass was rubbish, and Lagronis do retain possession. But again, they've just, they're hoofing it. They're, they're worried. They're just trying to get it out, but we're bringing it straight back. Pucco with a ball through to Garaletta. This is the chance now. Lozano doesn't... Oh, I thought it's not a penalty. Okay, it's, it's not a penalty. We've got a chance to come forward, though. Varela, what a ball through to Pucco that is with so much space. He puts it back in. It's headed around the area. It's not going in the back of a net. Why is it not going in the back of a net? Varela in. Lozano. Pucco. Pucco does get it in the back of a net. 92nd minute winner. Fingers crossed now. That is it. We needed that goal. It was coming. You can see from the stats that it was coming, that goal. We had to make it count, and we have done in the final few moments. And there was a highlight for Lagranis, but I feel like this is just a standard after game highlight now. I hope, although Schaefer is through, Schaefer had so many options across the box there, didn't make use of them. He missed his opportunity, and that was 40 seconds left in this game. Well, Subias just gave away a free kick with a few seconds to go. The, the, the time has gone. The 40, 94th minute is there. Lozano wins his ball. Just run up the pitch with it. Run to the corner flag. Just make sure we... Oh, what a great ball that is to Pucco. Can we grab another one with four full time? Cross wasn't good enough. Johannesson on the edge of the area into Carabalo, whatever his name is. Uh, Pastrana gets tackled, and that should be it. Come on, referee. Blow your whistle. He does. Lagranes 1, Oviedo 2. A late win but a much-needed win to show our dominance. I'm going to say calmly, we got away with that today out there, boys. Uh, Pucco and Pastrana look demotivated. I'm not going to really talk to either of them. I'll talk to Pucco, actually, because he played very well. 8.2 rating, uh, passionately. Very happy with the winning goal out there from you. He just looks confused now. Uh, Pastrana, he's, well, he's got a 6.6. .6. He didn't play very well at all, mate. Right, so all the other results from the weekend have come through now. We stay in third, which is pretty good going. A point behind Lugo, who are the only team to beat us so far this season. And Numantia also up there three points ahead of us. So early early season, the table's looking pretty good, I've got to say. Uh, I am happy with how this is going. If we can keep this momentum up, I think a top six finish is definitely ours for the taking. Good to see that there's no injuries at the moment, which is pretty good. Uh, we've seen a 55% decrease in injuries so far to what we'd expect on average, which probably means at some point uh, we'll have 10 players injured at one point. I'm sure that's how a logical work. Um, so I'd rather have someone injured now than... Here we go, Katungo out... <laughs> As I was talking about injuries, Katungo is now out for two months, or no, six to eight weeks with a specialist with lower back stress fracture. So we'll send to a specialist, obviously. That, that is typical, though, isn't it? I literally talk about injuries, saying how good we currently are with no injuries, and then that happens. Right, for this cup game, we're going to move back to the diamond, I think. So that means that Lozano comes on the pitch for Pucco. Uh, we're going to bring on, where is he? We're going to bring Diara on for Aaron, I think. And Aaron can go on the bench for that winger instead. Tungo can't be on the bench because he's picked up an injury. So Yosin will come on instead. We'll get Jeremy on the bench as well instead of Pucco. Again, someone may have suggested a nickname, but I've not read the comments yet because I've not put the episode out yet yesterday. So Jeremy, not a definite nickname for him, but that's what we've got so far. I want to give Oyen Sansa a little run out, actually. So we're going to bring him on the pitch today to start. Uh, but other than that, I think there are all the changes that we'll make uh, for this game against Albacete. Right, kickoff is upon us here. We're in the blue at home. They've kicked off instead of us, which is a bit unusual, I've got to say. Now, we already beat Albacete 2-0 earlier on in the season, so I'm looking for a similar victory today. They're not doing very well. They're down in like the relegation zone, I think, in the league right now. So, we should be winning this. Carballo on the ball now for us. Puts a great ball through to Thomas. Uh, can he get a ball out to the wing? Not quite. Sunset does go get a ball out to the wing. He puts it into Varela. Lorenzo, I nearly said his name completely wrong there. Lorenzo gets on the end of Varela's cross. And a lovely little move to open that game. Puts us 1-0 up as things stand. Now we got knocked out in the third round last year to Tenerife. So we didn't really have much of a cup run. Uh, I'd like to get a bit more of a cup run going this year. I'd like to see how we do. Raul Thomas gets on the end of another Varela cross and makes it 2-0 in six minutes. So already looking pretty good. But I'm not going to get too excited because we remember what happened in the first episode of the season. Last episode, the first game of the season, we were 3-0 up. 
and then we drew three all. Johansson has picked up a knock. It looks like a tight calf, so apparently we should bring him off. Uh, Valentini can play that. Obviously, Katunga would normally play there, but he's uh, injured himself very selfishly. So, Valentini will come on right back for the rest of this game. Now, there's no real motive to go on a cup run because there's no prize money unless you get to the final and then win it. So, I mean, it's it, it does seem a little bit pointless trying to go on a cup run. I'd rather maybe just get out of it and focus on the league. But I do want to meet the board's minimum target of fifth round. So, that is kind of where my motivation is coming from. So, as long as we get to there... I don't care if we lose the fifth round or not, that's fine. As you can see so far though, we are absolutely battering Albacete. Eight shots to zero shots, five on target, which is very unusual for us. Uh, we probably only get five on target in a game usually, so it's good to see that already in 40 minutes. We've got another chance now as Sunset puts Lozano forward. He puts a cross into Raul Thomas. Incredible save by the goalkeeper. His cross, Lozano's cross put back in the area. Did not manage to find its way into the back of the net. It was cleared instead. We had a little decent attack there. More of that, please, boys. Well, a fantastic first half in terms of the stats there. I'm very happy with that. Um, calmly, don't let performance levels drop because we, we know this has happened before when we've been winning at half-time and then we draw the game. So don't let those performance levels drop, boys. Make sure we finish the job that we have started. Thomas tries to do that and whacks the crossbar from the opening highlights of this second half. Very unlucky there for him. He has been probably the best signing, I've got to say. I think he has been the best signing so far this season. Scoring plenty of goals. He's scored more goals in games played, I think, so far for him. He's probably the top goal scorer in the league as well. So, what a signing he has been. Valentini now on the ball as we try and build from the back. Playing it back towards Carlos Hernandez now. Sanset, who's impressed me today, I've got to say. He's been playing pretty well. The youngsters on the pitch. We've got three of them. Subias, Sanset and Diara. Uh, Diara... Not quite had the same game as he did in the opening game of the season when he scored two goals pretty early on to have an incredible debut. Although he's not had too many chances since then because we've sort of gone back to the winger formation more, than, more often than not. Uh, they've just hit the post with their, well, actually not the first shot of the game, their third shot of the game. I thought it was their first one. Uh, this coming back into it in the second half ever so slightly at Albacete, but I think we should be too good and too far ahead now to really actually have them worry us with the result. Right, we're going to make a change then. Uh, Lozano is going to come off the pitch. Uh, he, he's played very well, but I want to give Jeremy a run out as a poacher. And then who else do we want to bring on? I'm tempted to kind of bring on Yosin uh, instead of Hernandez. I don't know if that's risky or not, but I've, I've done it now. So uh, there we go. 15 minutes to go in this game. Hopefully we can hold on. They've had a lot more shots this second half. They're, they're doing pretty well. They might have had more shots than us in the second half, actually, which is slightly worrying, but none of them have been on target, which is... Fine by me, I've got to say. Sunset puts the ball in. Oh, Jeremy was almost there. That ball had just creeped through. Jeremy was there to make it 3-0 easily. And now, Alvacete coming forward. Susetta on the ball. He puts his cross in. Sergio puts it over the bar. They are coming closer in the second half. I'm not a fan of it. But again, they've not got one on target yet. So I'm not too worried. Well, by looks of things then, we're going to be marching into the fourth round. Although, let's not talk too soon. Valeretti, uh, Valentini rather, makes a huge tackle there. And leads the counter-attack now. He... <laughs> He can't get past his man. His man just absolutely hoofs it at the other end of the pitch and they've scored a goal from it. Oh my gosh. Right. <laughs> Please, boys. Let's be... They're, they're one shot on target as well. That's so annoying. In the Lincoln Loco, we did have a curse with Barish Urza. He seemed to concede a lot of shots on target. Like, they had, like, two shots on target in the game and he conceded them both. Juan Carlos seems to have a similar curse, I have to say. Uh, they had another shot on target towards the end of that game there. But 50% of their shots on target have gone in the back of the net. He's got two jobs there. He's only done his job 50% of the time. It's it's not a good statistic. Either way, though, we have won 2-1 here on the day, which is good going. So uh, we'll go calmly. That was a Jekyll and Hyde performance out there. Uh, that ooh, I don't know if that was risky or not. Francisco Varela have played very well. Proud of your dominating performance out there. He looks confused now. Jordan Williams, um, calmly, you played well out there, I think, maybe. He did well out there. We'll say that he looks confused now. Uh, Lozano looks confused in the mode. I mean, a few of them do, don't they? Well, it had the desired effect on most players there. We didn't play very well in the second half, but we got the job done in the first half. I tell you what, we're going to stay around for the Spanish Cup fourth round draw. I don't know if I'll show you the fourth round game or not. Um, it depends when it falls and things like that. I was, as I said before, we're not really looking for a cup from. We're looking to get fifth round. That's at, at best, really. But I thought I'd show you a Spanish Cup game at least because I need to talk about it a little bit. All right, this is when the big boys come into the game, actually, I've got to say. So uh, we'll, we'll draw through this very quickly. Imagine if we get like Barcelona or, or someone. Um, I, I don't know if that's even possible. I don't know. 
Oh, we've got Getafe in the division above us. Um, so that's probably a winnable game, I've got to say. Actually, looking through that, Getafe, uh, so I say that, they're sitting 12th in the Spanish first division. So maybe it's not a winnable game. Oh, it's over two legs as well, the Getafe stuff. That is, that's annoying. Can't say I'm a huge fan of that, to be fair. Spanish Cup, fourth round, two legs. But it, it's there, we've got to do it, so... Okay. Right, next episode then is going to be uh, Athletic Pamplona, which is Osasuna and Valladolid. Someone did ask if we could see a game against Osasuna uh, last season, and we never did one in the end. So this year, Athletic Pamplona, Osasuna is going to be next episode alongside Valladolid. So thank you very much for watching today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. Make sure you do drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and I will see you next time for some more Real Deal action.